We are going to be using a pocket-sized computer called the microbit to learn the basics of programming. What is the microbit? The microbit is a tiny computer used to teach programming topics. Originally used in the United Kingdom, the microbit is a simple programmable device with a handful of built-in components that plugs into your computer via a micro USB cable. Let's take a closer look at the microbit's hardware. The microbit has a bank of 25 programmable LEDs, two buttons, and a series of built-in components pictured here. The circuit board contains the processor and other specialized chips. On the bottom of the device are the input-output pins and other ports needed to connect the microbit to other sensors and the like. Obviously, the microbit's purpose is to facilitate the learning of programming topics, so it was designed to be programmed in a variety of ways. Through the use of the browser-based JavaScript Blocks Editor, the microbit can be programmed using either Blocks or JavaScript. In this user-friendly editor, you can write programs and even preview them using the included virtual microbit. When your program is ready, you can compile and download it to test on your microbit. The tool generates a compiled file with a .hex extension. This is the special file format that the microbit expects to be programmed with. Running your compiled microbit program is as simple as connecting your microbit to your computer and then dragging the .hex file to the device. When connected, the microbit looks like a connected flash drive, so transferring files is as easy as drag and drop. The microbit can also be programmed using Python, using the browser-based Python editor. There is an accompanying microbit API, complete with documentation, that must be used to interact with the microbit. Just as with the JavaScript block editor, completed programs can be compiled and downloaded as the special .hex files that the microbit needs. As before, simply dragging and dropping the .hex file to the microbit allows you to test. In addition to generating compiled .hex files, this editor also allows you to download your source as .py files, the format normally associated with Python programs. Make sure you check out a micro bit from me. Be sure to take care of it and take note of all the bits and pieces it includes. Let's take a moment to talk about a couple of things before we get to programming our micro bit. Before you start coding, you need to have a plan. For programmers, this involves informally describing the program, creating a rough outline or draft, if you will. This is done using what is called pseudocode. The prefix pseudo means fake. So the idea is that we aren't making real code per se, but we are describing the solution we will be building in terms that any human, even those who don't know a programming language, can understand. Pseudocode can either be a short English-like description of the solution we are building, or we can accomplish the same thing using what's called a flowchart or process flow. In a flowchart, special symbols are used to represent tasks and decisions made in the program. Here's an example of a simple program represented both visually and in informally written pseudocode. Each describes a solution just in its own way. When you are programming a device like the microbit, you are doing a special type of programming known as event-based programming. Put simply, you write code that listens in the background for something, in other words, an event to occur. As a programmer, you write what are called event handlers. An event handler defines what to do, what code to run, in response to the event occurring. Here is what event-based programming looks like when coding the microbit using blocks. An event handler, like this one that listens for button A to be pressed, is coded to perform a task or tasks in response to the event occurring. In this case, a smiley face will be shown on the LEDs in response to button A being pressed. Here's a quick look at some of the event handler blocks you can explore as you continue your micro bit adventure. Last but not least, I'm going to walk you through how to complete a micro bit assignment. Although each project is unique, the same general steps apply. First, preview any models I provide so you know what you are building. Then, read the directions completely and review any provided pseudocode, both written and visual. Lastly, complete the project to the best of your ability and submit according to the specific directions that I provide. Let's walk through an example project. Normally, I'll give you a summary so you have some context, and I will always give you step-by-step -step directions. 
make sure you pay close attention to project naming and file naming. Whenever possible, I'll give you a demonstration which shows you the completed project in action. Make sure you read closely any pseudocode I provide, whether it be written or visual, and I may provide you with additional screenshots to assist you. Once you're ready, follow the directions from top to bottom. Make sure you use the editor and write your code in the format that I request. In this case, I'm writing a block-based program by dragging blocks from the tray to the stage. Once I've completed my program, I can test it using the virtual micro bit. If everything looks great, I'm going to rename my project and save it. When I save a micro bit project, it will prompt me for the .hex file. I like to stay organized, creating a directory for each project. Remember to name your files correctly, save them off somewhere, then connect your micro bit. All you have to do is drag your .hex file to the micro bit. Once the file has been copied to the micro bit, you'll be able to test it on the micro bit. Make sure you submit whatever file I request. If I request for you to share, click share and publish your project copying the URL to your clipboard. This is what you will submit in Schoology. 